Okay, so uh, I'm really actually happy to be here. I've heard about EFL Talks for a long time, and of course, um, as, as he suggested, I've been asked to come on every once in a while, and here I am. Uh, I didn't really have anything great to talk about, I guess, before now, but now that I am joint coordinator of TD SIG, maybe that's um, a good reason. So I really want to talk to you uh, about the stuff that TD SIG does and how it makes me excited to be part of um, this teacher development community. And I thought it kind of fit into both streams of this um, talk today because it's not only talking about teacher associations and how they work for us, but it's also talking about um, some innovative stuff that we're doing in TD SIG. So both of those things should be really good for um, recording, I guess. So if you don't know anything about what I'm talking about in terms of TD SIG or SIG or any of those things in general, you may first want to learn a little bit about IATEFL, which is the teacher association from which TD SIG is one of 16 special interest groups. And you can see them along this little purple line, um, starting with us at the top, of course. And then if you go around, you can read all of them. It would take me the entire 10 minutes, really, to talk about each one of these amazing special interest groups. But more or less, they divide um, people's interests into um, areas of uh, kind of expertise, or at least, at least interest. And you join that when you join IATEFL as a member. So teacher development is one of those. And um, that's the one that I'm a uh, joint coordinator for with uh, Le Sinead Levan. Let's talk a little bit about um, how this works, though. Um, for me, teacher associations have been an amazing part of my um, development. In particular, you can see sort of on the, on the yellow there that I started locally, and I think that's what most of us do, when we first joined a teaching association. And uh, my local one was TESOL Toronto. And we put on events that were um, specific, you know, to Toronto's context. So a lot of the sectors and things that we teach our students in may not cross over so much. But, um, so things were very specific to Toronto. And I gained a lot of experience, not only from joining as a member, but then um, being part of the committee and eventually being part of the president and putting on conferences. But um, after a while, I realized that I didn't want to stay in my uh, solely in my local context, so I needed to spread my wings. And while I had done so online already, I hadn't really joined teaching associations outside of Toronto, and therefore I, I jumped the gun. No, jumped the gun? Maybe that's not the right expression. But uh, I did a big jump, and um, I moved over to IATEFL. And so now I'm going from something local, which I still have my foot in, to something that's a little bit broader. And I encourage everyone who's watching this to do that too at some point in their career. Now, TD SIG has a whole bunch of stuff that's going on that makes it really exciting right now. And basically, um, if we start out with the e-bulletin, which is something as a member, um, you will get delivered to your inboxes every month. What happens is we have um, a theme that happens every two months and you can see them listed there. If you go to tvsig.org slash publications, you can see more information about this. Uh, the next one that's coming up is Keep Your Mojo Going in February, so it'll be delivered to everyone's uh, inbox then. But this sort of frames the theme in which a lot of the things that happen in the two months following um, the e-bulletin um, are framed. So, for example, uh, if we talk about October or, November or December's e-bulletin, we can see December was reflective TD, and therefore uh, that shaped the theme for the next couple of things that I'm going to talk about that came out relatively shortly afterwards. One of those is um, the Developod, and uh, it's our little podcast. Um, it's hosted by Christian, and I, I forgot to mention that Fiona Mocklin and Adam Simpson are the eBulletin um, the fabulous eBulletin ed editors. So I do want you to get in touch with them if you go to that um, part of our website. But um, moving on to the Developod, again, what I said is the eBulletin frames the theme. So uh, let's say it is Reflective TD, then the, the Developod episode would be about Reflective TD that comes out um, shortly after that. And it's hosted by Christian Tiplady. 
And um, just to give you a sense of what happens, uh, in our last episode, episode two, um, Christian asked a range of teachers to reflect on their own development um, in terms of A, their plans for TD over the next year, B, how they plan to achieve this, C, what support they needed. And there were three teachers from various contexts that discussed this on the podcast. Maria was from the UK and she just finished her CELTA. She's a novice teacher. Duran was from Jamaica and he wants to transition into teacher training. And Julia from the UK, she's eager to pursue a specialist project in ELT. All right. Our next episode is going to be coming out um, shortly after the e-bullets in February on keeping your mojo going. And I can't really tell you too much about that yet because it's a little bit of a surprise. But if you do go to SoundCloud, which is where we're hosting the podcast, or you just go to our website, which uh, is where it's embedded, you can subscribe or you can listen to um, either of the two episodes that we have so far. But it's an exciting thing that, it, that I think a SIG is doing um, to create its own podcast podcast and it's only going to be getting better and better after after we get going okay, super okay so i left off talking about the developod which is our podcast and um uh i lost my train of thought slightly but that's okay so the developod is one of three um things that we're doing with the td sig that are revolving around the theme organized by the e-bulletin so if you remember we have the e-bulletin that comes out first, usually at the first of the month, every other month. And its theme um, has people from the membership who have discussed or talked about things regarding that theme in a, in a bunch of various formats. And again, if you want more information about that, you can just go to our website, which I linked during that little open space. Uh, and then shortly after that comes out the Developod where Christian Tiplady um, hosts uh, and talks about the various themes with various teachers around the world. And then, uh, again, another very exciting thing that we've been doing related to this theme is something called TD Live. And uh, its host is Rich Portman. He's part of our online community team, and we were really, really trying to look for an online space where we could just interact with people um, live and really do something a little bit cool and different than maybe other SIGs have been doing. And hopefully they'll get on board to try it out too. And so we found on Facebook Live um, the functionality where, of course, you can have two people speaking. And it's a live video that happens uh, where anybody who happens to be watching at the time can post questions and interact with the speakers. So we've done a couple of these now. The last one um, we did was in October. And I was the, the co-host where we talked about really what is TD SIG. Um, what are our TD goals, how to avoid burnout, that kind of stuff. And we'll be having another one hosted by Rich again, probably um, early February on uh, reflective TD. And again, it's, it's just a really cool way to get people to um, interact, watch a video, and we can talk like right at the same time that they're, they're writing their questions. And if they miss it, it is recorded. So you can always watch it again, add questions, and then we, we tend to post comments later when we see those um, as well. So it's a good um, way to do a, a bit of an online community buildup, in my opinion. Uh, another thing that we've been doing, which is not connected to the themes of the eBulletin, but it is something we've been doing annually for a couple of years now, and we will continue to do so coming up this February on the 24th, is our TD SIG Web Carnival. And it's not totally um, dissimilar to what we're doing here in terms of EFL talks, except the fact that um, we do try to combine um, membership um, ideas through Twitter uh, before the TD SIG Web Carnival has happened. Uh, on our blog, we also try to get um, people to write blog posts related to the theme, which in this case this year is TD success stories from around the world. So it will be also touching on teacher associations and how they're great for everybody um, in some way or another anyway. We often include video um, where we ask someone, ask people a question about the theme and they post a video, a very short one, and we post it to the website. And then finally, we have the day of event, which is not um, unlike what we're doing right now, except the sessions are about 40 minutes. And I believe at the end of this year's session, we will be having a panel 
of different people talking about teacher associations throughout the world. So that's coming up, so you should bookmark your calendar and you can go to uh, the website there, which is tdsig.org. Um, I'm just typing it in here, slash web carnival. And you'll be able to read a little bit more about it as we go. Uh, another exciting thing that happens on TDSIG, uh, Rob mentioned that um, the 4C ELT event calendar is a really good source to get to your information, and, and that's a little link to it there. But on our TDSIG website, we also have extended that into a call for proposals kind of calendar. So what tends to happen here is when someone inputs um, an event into the ELT calendar, they also tell about a call for proposals and when that is, and that gets uploaded to this Google Doc, which is embedded into um, tdsig.org slash CFP. So if you're looking for places to speak at um, and you just don't know where they are and uh, when they are, there's a nice little list here that TDSIG is now putting together for everybody. Um, ordered by when the call closes. And we're looking all, also into helping people develop how to write speaker proposals. Um, I, I mean, we've all been there where we're, we're rejected, so you know, a little advice is always gonna be useful. Uh, so that's coming up in the future as well. Finally, I'd like to talk a little bit about, and just very briefly about being on a committee for a teacher association I've been on two now, as I said, Tussle Toronto and TDSIG, and it really is one of the best places for me to improve um, a lot of aspects of, of my understanding about how things work, because I get exposed to teachers and ideas from different cultures, um, different teaching contexts, and uh, of course, uh, a lot of tools that I wouldn't normally have been exposed to, like making a podcast or like, um, website design or any number of things that um, can develop and work its way into the classroom. Uh, so this is my great committee that I work with and um, it's, it's just a fabulous group of people. So I really would suggest if you aren't a, not, you know, not only a member of a teacher association, but even if you are a member of a teacher association, I think it would be a really good idea one day, you know, give it, give it a shot, apply to be on a committee and you'll get to see a lot of um, things that you wouldn't normally have seen before, even back-end events, and that can um, definitely bring about knowledge that you didn't know. Lots of things transfer into the classroom, and I really encourage you to give it a shot. So um, having said that, I will stop there because um, blank slides and overtime and et cetera. So thank you very much. Great, Tyson, thanks so much, and sorry for the problem.